Hello, today Mike, Ryan, and I are going to be talking to you about turbocharging and supercharging. Before we dive into it, let's first go over some of the basics of combustion so we can learn why we would want to turbocharge or supercharge in the first place. As Mike is demonstrating here on the board, air is first taken into the cylinder, then compressed, then fuel is injected to begin combustion. The maximum amount of fuel that can be burned in the cylinder is determined by the amount of oxygen in the cylinder. This means that if we want more power out of the engine, we can get it by putting more air into the cylinder. Since the dimensions of the cylinder are already set, changing the size of the cylinder is not an option to allow for more air. So if we want more power and we can't change the size of the cylinder, how can we get more air into the cylinder? If the air is increased in density by compressing it and forcing it into the cylinder, we'll then have more oxygen in the cylinder, meaning we can burn more fuel and produce more power. This compression of the charge is called supercharging. One way that you can supercharge the air is by adding a compressor driven directly from the crankshaft of the engine. This does include a small loss as the compressor requires power to be driven, however the power gained far outweighs this loss. A me another method of driving the compressor is by using the exhaust gas produced to spin a turbine that drives a compressor and compresses the air. Supercharging this way is called turbocharging. Now let's head to Haverly to see how it all works. Hello, we're here in Haverly with Ryan, who's going to tell us how this turbo works. So, here's a turbo. We have our turbine and our compressor. Exhaust gas coming out of the cylinder goes in here and drives the pinwheel here. Now on the other side, this compressor is driven and it compresses the air and it's exhausted out here and forced into the cylinder. And that's how a turbocharger works.